everyone. Uh, my name is Fatih Hamzolo from Intel Corporation. Welcome to my presentation, uh, my class on uh, volatile and non-volatile memory design methods. Today, we're going to start with conventional volatile memories, uh, SRAM and DRAM essentially, and then we'll switch gears to emerging memories, uh, STT RAM and RRAM. Then we'll end up uh, with um, uh, we'll end with non-volatile NAND memories. First, SRAM uh, as a conventional um, memory. SRAM is six transistor uh, with the two transfer gates and the four, four transistor in the middle as a latch here. It is uh, fully embedded in the CMOS technology. Uh, it is fast and it is very compact layout as you see here. Um, um, SRAM, another beauty of the SRAM is it works below one volt, but due to random mismatches, there is a certain VCC min of the operation. Uh, designers typically optimize the sizings of the SRAM transistors uh, to, to optimize read beamin or write beamin, but typically improving one hurts the other. As an example, a weaker transfer gate helps the read beamin, but it hurts the write beamin and it hurts the read speed. And stronger pull-up helps the read beamin, but it, it, uh, to hold, as holding the storage nodes, but it hurts the write VCC min. Besides the uh, transistor sizing, what are the other things that designers look into optimizing their designs? First, the leakage. In SRAM, uh, the, in typically SRAM, if you implement SRAM in several hundred kilobytes or megabytes, you are only accessing a small portion of the array. The rest of them is leaking, especially these latches in the middle. So, so designers either collapse the VCC of the SRAM during idle mode or raise the VSS of it uh, to control the leakage. But one thing the designer needs to be careful is controlling that that rail-to-rail -rail voltage of the SRAM across PVT variation because you do not want to collapse too much, uh, otherwise you will lose the data in the bit cell. Whether you drop the VCC or VSS depends on your design and technology on leakages, leakage components. Uh, if, for example, um, you care about the uh, pass gate, gate leakage here, which is through a stored one value, you would rather drop SRAM VCC rather, um, and also if you need a big wake-up transistor for your um, SRAM VCC collapse for write assist, you can uh, double duty that uh, as a wake-up transistor after sleep as well. So you might prefer SRAM VCC collapse. Other than leakage reduction, uh, we, we mentioned the read VCC and write VCC optimization through uh, transistor sizing, but SRAM designers also employ read assist and write assist techniques to control the, uh, the VCC min. First, the read assist, what are the read assist techniques? Word line under drive, um, it, but it has a performance hit and it, it hurts the write margin because of the half select bits on the word line. Half precharge bit line, um, you precharge the bit line below one volt uh, to make the transfer gate essentially weaker, but it has, you have to also be careful controlling this uh, voltage because if you drop too much, you will turn on the unselected bits on the same word line. Another one is column-based PMOS forward by devising stronger PMOS helps read. What about the write assist techniques? Uh, word line overdrive is one, but you need a second supply and, and you sacrifice the read margin again because of the half select bits on the same word line. SRAM VCC collapse is another commonly used technique to improve the write VCC min without hurting read VCC min because you do it only uh, for the selected column during write. An example sh is shown here. Again, you have to control this SRAM collapse, this SRAM VCC collapse throughout the process and temperature corners so that the unselected bits on the same column do, uh, do not lose their value. And a third one is again heavily used is negative bit line. You, you pull the bit line below VSS uh, to a negative value to make the pass gate stronger again to help the write only for the selected column during write without hurting the read. Again, you have to control this droop, otherwise you will be turning on the um, unselected bits on the same column. Now DRAM. DRAM is different than SRAM. It's essentially one transistor and one capacitor. It's through charge storage. Um, I have shown here one example of a read operation. Uh, for example, the, if the bit is, is storing something close to one, one value VCC, once we turn on the word line, the bit line and reference bit lines are precharged to half VCC first, then and charge sharing happens after you turn the word line on between bit and the bit line. Um, 
charge sharing brings the bit line delta V above the reference bit line, then you fire the sensemp here, you read the data, and at the same time your sensemp is a write driver and it writes back the value, writes back the bit uh, value. You turn off the word line, precharge it, and the next access can start. This is the random cycle time. If you notice other differences in, in EDRAM or DRAM design is essentially you need multiple extra voltages. Uh, for example, you need a VCC plus VTN for the word line when you turn it on to write a one value. You need a negative voltage for the word line in idle mode to cut down the leakage for, for refresh rate uh, uh, retention of the charge storing bit. And you need a half VCC for the bit lines for sensing. Another difference is that uh, every single bit on the selected word line is disturbed in DRAM because it's charge storing. So you need a send cent per column Essentially, you are reading and writing back every bit on the word line, as shown here. And column muxing is, is post sensem column muxing in DRAM, as opposed to SRAM, which is pre sensem column muxing in general. Coupling is very important for DRAM design. Um, essentially, it's charge storage. Bit line couples to bit line, bit line couples to bit line bar. Um, other, way, other ways of coupling is extreme patterns in, in DRAM that you have to be very careful in the design. For example, extreme case is, imagine you are reading a one from a column and every single bit on that word line is storing a zero. What happens in that case is, uh, all the unselected bit lines couple to uh, selected, all the unselected bit lines couple to unselected word lines, and all those unselected word lines couple to selected bit line and hurts your read margin. And multiple ways to mitigate that problem is reducing uh, overlap capacitance or, or firing the sense I'm slowly. Another extreme uh, access uh, failure mode uh, in, in DRAM is row hammer. What row hammer is essentially when you are accessing a, a word line, that access can disturb the bit at the neighboring bit cell, as shown here. During the refresh rate of, let's say, one millisecond, you could be accessing um, accessing um, the, um, the aggressive word line tens of thousands of time and then it will be disturbing the neighbor bit. And solution to that is you can limit the random cycle time to the same word line um, uh, to a longer value or you can refresh the bits more often when you detect a row hammer. Switching gears to emerging memories. Let's start with STT MRAM, ST spin transfer torque uh, magnetic random access memory. It essentially is through a magnetic tunneling junction uh, uh, device here. Essentially, it's one T and one MTJ. Um, so the way it works is uh, when you pass the current either at, uh, from top electrode to bottom electrode or bottom electrode to top electrode, you either write a high resistance state or a low resistance state, and then you put a small voltage to read it. A picture is shown here in the back end. One transistor is in the front end, and the, the device is in the back end, stacked above the transistor. And the difference between low and high resistance state is typically between 2x to uh, 3x. So if you have a 2 kilo ohm low resistance state, your high resistance state will be somewhere between 4 to 6 kilo ohm, depending on the temperature. What are the critical things to watch out when you design? It's harder to write at cold harder to read at heart, and also easier to read disturb at heart. Uh, retention phase are, of course, worse at heart. And other challenges you have to be careful is back hopping and the, and the breakdown during write. Circuit techniques for STTRAM. First, reading. Since the read margin is, uh, is not that large in STTRAM, uh, you have to control the variation of the device. And also, you don't want your circuit to impose uh, variation. So some of the techniques employed are uh, offset cancellation sensing scheme. Uh, designers typically sense the offset in the first phase uh, when they are sensing between data and reference bit cell, and they cancel it in the second phase. Um, this is for read. And for write, just like the other probably non-volatile memories, uh, designers employ write verify write scheme. So basically, you read the bit before you write it with a higher magnitude of the current. And you only write it if, only if the bit uh, didn't fill it. This is to minimize the stress and, and, and improve the endurance, write endurance. RDRAM, resistive RAM. Resistive RAM circuit operation is very similar. It's again 1T and 1R, um, just like STT RAM. Again, the RDRAM is in the back end, transistor is in the front end, shown as an example here. Although the device is, is, is quite different, 
Um, it's through oxide element, uh, and tantalum oxide is shown here, but there are hafnium oxide uh, versions as well. So in this case, again, passing a current from top electrode to bottom electrode or vice versa is writing a one and zero higher and low resistance states, and you put a small voltage to read it. One difference in RM is that when it comes out of the fab, uh, the device is giga ohm resistance. So you need to put a high voltage first to form the filament, and once you form the filament one time, after that essentially you are uh, passing oxygen vacancies back and forth to write a one and zero. Typically, RM requires higher voltage operation reported in the literature compared to STTRM, and it has a lesser endurance. Um, it, it has also continuous resistive states, unlike STTRM, which is more discrete states. Here, an example is shown for a one over R, essentially current distribution, pre and post cycling on the left, and pre and post bake, which is retention on the right. As you see, the resistance drift uh, after 100,000 right cycles and after the baking, which mimics the 10 years non volatile memory. Um, so when you are designing your read margin, you should not only look at the uh, time zero, but also plan for end of life read margin, uh, including the read disturb. So you have to take into account these three criteria for end of life uh, read margin. Um, in terms of circuit techniques, similar techniques are used in RERM. Again, offset cancel sensing and write verify write scheme uh, to improve the endurance. One other thing is that RM, RM doesn't have the um, magnetic attack risk like SCTRM. At the end, uh, non-flash memory design. Non-flash is very high density storage class memory. Essentially, your one transistor is your storage element itself, uh, is a selector and the, and the storage element. Charge strapping is happening at the gate oxide. Um, the way it operates is recent modern art uh, NAND flashes store three electrical values in one physical bit in one transistor. Essentially, you divide the VT distribution into eight states, and you program it into one of the eight states to get three electrical bits out of it. It's very high density. And again, mo modern uh, NAND flash is, in the recent years, went to 3D. You, you stack vertically. Uh, each layer is a word line. Um, and as an example is shown here, each layer is a word line here, and vertically you have the channel a tube. Um, and the, what limits the number of stacks you can put is this tapering in the channel. The bit at the top, the word line at the top, and the word line at the bottom looks quite different. And, and, and technologists and designers scale the width and the distance of each word line layer to put more stack uh, in, the, in the chip to improve the density. Um, what are the things to watch out? Uh, program verify is very important because you're trying to put eight states in the, in the bit cell. Those states don't look like this PowerPoint here. Typically, they overlap. And you have to be very careful on programming them. And there are multiple techniques employed, which is first doing, for example, a coarse programming and then fine-tuned programming around that uh, VT distribution. Uh, word line to word line coupling is very important, especially with 3D. As you can see, it's a very small distance. And um, in terms of overcoming the delay, long word lines and long bit lines, designers propose a word line overdrive and bit line discharge transistor to speed up the, uh, the, the read times and write times. And at the end, I have the references if you want to stare at. Thanks for attending this course and thanks for watching this video.